Well, good morning and welcome to this Jamies with Jesus on Wednesday, November 19th. Um, I can't say it's freezing out here because it's actually 36 degrees, so it's freezing plus four, <laughs> but it is a bit brisk. Um, sun is just beginning to peek over the horizon. Uh, so even in the course of this devotion, it'll start to feel better just as the sun comes up. Um, this devotion is purely triggered by yesterday's devotion by Pastor Josh. If you did not see it, uh, it was wonderful devotion, but also uh, near the end when he was experiencing some technical difficulties, uh, it's worth the review at the 12 minute mark. Uh, it got me thinking about laughter and um, the fact that Renee also was watching it and she actually called me on the way to work and said, did you see? And she, anyway, both of us were laughing. Uh, obvious as, as Pastor Josh was having some technical difficulties, he was interacting uh, when he um, explained that we could leave and sign off now as he was having a challenge because the cold weather, uh, it was obvious that we weren't the only ones. Um, and so, I thought about laughter and uh, just what a great personality Pastor Josh has, uh, how blessed I am to serve in ministry with him. Uh, before him, Pastor Chris, also a wonderful sense of humor. And so these last four years of being able to laugh with colleagues and uh, parishioners, uh, you know, throughout my ministry, a lot of lay folks have had a great sense of humors, even in challenging times. It just makes them easier. So. The obvious story of laughter for me in scripture comes from Genesis 21. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me and everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, whoever has said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. A side note says that Isaac's name is a play on the word laughter because earlier in uh, chapter 18, when the birth was promised, uh, the angels by the tent uh, with Abraham by the oaks of Mamre this is 18 verses 9 um, Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old advanced in age and had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women so La Sarah laughed to herself saying after I've grown old and my husband is old shall I have pleasure the Lord said to Abraham why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied saying, I did not laugh for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. So I was thinking that um, laughing at others can be mean, uh, even cruel laughing at ourselves is a self-deprecating sense of humor and it actually a lot of times uh, lowers the embarrassment threshold for others who might be feeling nervous about whether you know you made a mistake or didn't make a mistake and so when one can laugh at oneself it just eases uh, tension and then when we can laugh with others uh, it really builds a sense of community and joy um, from the Yale Scientific, which bills itself as the nation's oldest college science publication, physically smiling, which happens when we're laughing, releases dopamine in our brain. It's a, a positive feedback loop that even engaging the smiling muscles has a physiological effect on our brains. Um, so it truly takes more effort, more muscles to frown than it does to smile. So you can be lazy <laughs> and just smile. <laughs> it's easier on you. Um, if you want to give yourself a workout, I guess you could frown. But um, laughing at oneself, um, again, physiologically has that positive feedback loop. 
woke up uh, this morning, uh, checked my Twitter feed, and one of the people that I follow had just posted something, I think it was a, a condensation of an article from New York Times, that Pfizer's uh, vaccine, now they're projecting, I don't know if that scientific study has been released, I know that uh, early were press releases with just minimal information, but at least 90% effectiveness, possibly 95%, but, but doing the math, Pfizer said they could have 50 million doses out by the end of this year, which is phenomenal. Of that distribution though, half would come to the United States or half would be produced and stay in the United States. Um, so that brings it down to 25 million. And then it requires two doses. So that would be 12 and a half million people potentially vaccinated here um, by the end of the year, which would be a great start but it really is a start when you're looking at a population of over 300 million. Um, again, that's not to be negative, that's to simply lay out a timeline to say that the, the most effective things we can continue to do are wear our masks, physical distance, be outdoors even when it's chilly. At least if you're indoors, try to create some cross ventilation, you know, getting some fresh air in, um, movement of that, uh, washing our hands, uh, you know, avoiding touching our face, all the good stuff that we've been trying to do since uh, since March. But today, maybe you'll spend some time uh, uh, searching for an old comedy routine or a TV show that brings you laughter. Uh, maybe it'll be something um, you, you even stumble upon yourself, uh, but just something that causes you to smile, causes you to laugh, which allows us to then bear down and do the continued work of, of um, doing our best to turn back the tide. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about flattening the curve, which we did when the cases were about a quarter of what they were uh, back in the spring, but truly um, it's become a desperate situation in some parts of the country, not here. And I say not yet, not because it would be inevitable, but certainly if we go crazy, um, we wouldn't be protected any more so than other, uh, other places. So if we can continue to be smart, diligent, encourage one another uh, to do our best. So let us pray. Holy God, hardwired into our bodies that you create is this wonderful sense of joy and um, physical uh, reinforcement to when we laugh and smile that it makes us feel better can actually dull some pain take our minds away um, and so bless us with a sense of joy and laughter uh, as we go about our day as we seek to minister with and among and for others as we are gracious in receiving the gifts from others who minister to us Thank you for the joy of community. Thank you for the joy of colleagues who can um, just make life easier for one another. Thanks for the joy of a community where we can um, laugh together, cry together, um, go about doing your work together. Bless us this day that we may be a blessing for others. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name, amen. And now it would be poetic justice if I'm not able to log, log off, but I'll give it a go and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.